Welcome to Kingdom Reality, your gateway to deep insights into the truths and realities of God's kingdom. Dive deep into the teachings of esteemed teachers of God's Word as they illuminate the mysteries of Scripture, offering priceless wisdom and revelations. Our channel serves as a beacon of enlightenment, guiding seekers on a transformative journey towards understanding the essence of divine truth and purpose. Join us as we explore the depths of spiritual reality and embark on a quest for genuine understanding and spiritual growth, revealing kingdom realities. In today's sermon, we explore the profound topic of the ministry of the Holy Ghost to man. The Holy Ghost awakens us to the life of God. The Holy Ghost serves as the divine spark that awakens us to the abundant life that God offers. He transforms us through His power. The Holy Ghost transforms our hearts, molding us into the image of Christ. He renews our mind. The Holy Ghost renews our minds, aligning our thoughts with God's truth and wisdom. He sanctifies us. Through sanctification, the Holy Ghost sets us apart for God's purposes, empowering us to live holy and righteous lives. He kills our sinful appetites. The Holy Ghost enables us to crucify the flesh, putting to death our sinful desires and empowering us to live victoriously. May we continually yield to the ministry of the Holy Ghost, allowing His transformative power to work within us. I pointed out five ministries of the Holy Spirit. The first ministry of the Holy Ghost, I said, is to... Now, of course, the ministry of the Holy Ghost we dealt with was the ministry of the Holy Ghost to man. There is the ministry of the Holy Ghost to nature and creation. There is the ministry of the Holy Ghost to even Jesus himself. You saw that the Holy Ghost did some things with Christ and all of that, but we specified man so that we can narrow down our teaching. And as touching man, we said there were five major ministries of the Holy Spirit. Number one, we said is the convicting ministry of the Holy Spirit. And I said this ministry is important because without this ministry, none of us will even think it's necessary to have a relationship with God. None of us will feel sorry about our sins and none of us will ever repent from our sins. John 16, 18. He said, when the spirit of truth is come, he shall reprove the world. John 16, 8. When the spirit of truth is come, he said, he shall reprove the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. If the Holy Ghost were not working, trust me, when you are done preaching, people will nod their head and say, where do I go? The reason people hear you and they are convicted. The reason people hear you and they repent is not because you are an orator. It's because while you are talking, the Holy Ghost is working on their hearts. It's because of the Holy Ghost that you and I are here serving God. And it's because of the Holy Ghost that the world will be saved from sin. Because it came to convict the world and to engender repentance. Acts 2.37 When they heard Peter speak, the Bible said they were pricked in their hearts. And they said, men and brethren, what shall we do to be saved? The Holy Ghost was the one responsible for pricking their heart and turning their hearts back to the Lord. The second ministry of the Holy Ghost, I said, is the transformational ministry. After you turn to the Lord, you are going to see that your mind will still be unrenewed. The Osborne told a story, very heart-touching story. He went to preach to a man, and the man wept in genuine repentance. And he was happy that God has found for himself another revivalist only for him to come the next day to follow up on the man the man was deep in immorality in fact he stumbled on the man and the man was in the act and he got confused how can somebody who was weeping yesterday in repentance suddenly decline back to iniquity and is deep into what he was actively doing and the lord told him that his heart has been regenerated but his mind has not yet been renewed. If God renews your mind, and if God does to your mind what he did to your heart, you will become an imbecile. In psychology, they call it tabula rasa. Your mind will become empty. So what God does is that when you are born again, he pre-processes, reprograms, and renews your mind. And that's the ministry the Holy Ghost will take you through over time. And I said there are five things that the Holy Ghost does in order to make your mind catch up with the frequency of your spirit. Number one, 
I said, the Holy Ghost will awaken you to the life of God. Ephesians 5.14, he said, Awake, awake, thou that sleepest, Christ will give thee light. Glory to God. 2 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12 to 14, he said, We have not received the spirit that is of this world, but we have received the spirit that is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us by God. In verse 13 he said, Which things also we speak, not with words, which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. Verse 14 he said, The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. So when you receive the Holy Ghost, the first thing he does is that he awakens you to a new realm of life. He awakens you to new possibilities in God that you were not aware of. And I told you hilariously that most of you, the week you gave your heart to Christ, you saw that you had hunger. You could pray in tongues for four hours. You didn't know where the energy came from. You saw that you prayed for the sick. They were healed. After three months, you started struggling with prayer. You started praying for the sick. They were not healed. What happened? The Holy Ghost was giving you a taste of the possibilities that you will enter in God. So that you can now grow into it. Are you following? So the first thing he does is to open your heart. Some of you had many visions the week you gave your heart to Christ. In fact, you saw yourself like the evangelist that led you to Jesus. And you were preaching to millions of people. <laughs> but it's been 10 years. You are still in your neighborhood. That is a possibility, but you will grow into it. But you know why he shows you that? 2 Peter 1 verse 4. He said he gave you exceeding great and precious promises that by them you might become partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through loss. So that's the Holy Ghost way of wooing you. What he's showing you is not a lie but you have to grow into it because the heir so long as he's a child is not different from a servant even though he be lord of all. I think this particular part sisters will know it better. When the man wanted to marry you, every morning he calls you, his voice is like honey. My dear, you will come alive. How are you this morning? Did you sleep in heaven? Do people sleep in heaven? My beloved angel, I couldn't sleep all night. My soul was awake just to hear your golden voice. The lady will be in front of the mirror <laughs> when you now got married he wakes up in the morning say is there food will you sleep all day madam go and cook food let's eat <laughs> well the holy ghost won't deceive you like your husband <laughs> if you have one <laughs> who deceives may the lord encounter him but but hear me now the holy ghost will show you the possibilities you have in God. The moment you accept that possibility, he will now activate the second aspect. He will begin to now teach you the realities of the spirit. You know, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17 and 18, Paul was praying for the church. He said that God may grant unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know the hope of your calling the riches of the of the inheritance of the saints in light and the exceeding greatness of his power that God wrought towards you when he raised you from the dead. That's when the Holy Ghost will now begin to show you. See these riches you have. It will take revelation to enter. So you need to start studying. This is where the Holy Ghost will tell you. See all of this power you are seeing. It will take prayer and fasting for your soul to ascend to access it. The power is there. The, the wealth is there. The opportunities are there. But if your mind, you don't know the word of God and you don't pray, you won't access it. So every time you see something great in God, the Holy Ghost will present a consecration before you. That the things of the spirit have a protocol. Because God reveals his acts to the children of Israel, but his ways to Moses. You need to know how to access the dimensions of God. And that's when the Holy Ghost will become rigid with you. That those things you saw in the first three months of giving your heart to Christ, there is a way to route them. And if you don't route them, you will never have those things. Because now he wants you to grow. When your child is one year old, if he does his hand like this, you will give him anything he asks. 
when he starts talking, you now start, boom, Koboko will come out. Because there are some things you do now, there will be Koboko. The first time I touched my little boy, he looked at me in shock. I said, welcome to maturity. <laughs> the Bible says foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. But the rod of correction will drive it out. I don't know. In Europe, they have new intelligence now. In America, they say they don't flog children. That's why they are growing in foolishness. Somebody wakes up and a man says, I feel like a woman. Try it here. You can't feel like that. You cannot feel like that. We have driven foolishness out of you. It is far. <laughs> the man looked at me. Welcome to maturity. There's a level where if you pee, they will beg you. Now, you will hear many languages. You will hear many. <laughs> Glory to God. So the Holy Ghost will teach you the realities of the Spirit. In John 16, 13, he said, I have many things to tell you, you can't receive it. How be it when the spirit of truth is come? He didn't say he will give you. He will guide you. You will walk with him into those realities. So if you are not willing to follow, you will never access them. The realities of the spirit. And then when you begin to follow, then the third thing will happen. He will begin to now renew your mind. That these things God is doing to you is for your own good. Is to help you grow. Titus 3 verse 5, Romans 12 verse 2. He begins to renew your mind so that you start thinking differently. Because you were not thinking like that before. He said, not by the works of our righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he has saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. That's what you find in Romans 12 verse 2. He said, be not conformed to this world. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. 2 Corinthians 3 18 we all with open faces beholding us in the glass the glory of the Lord we are changed from glory to glory even as by the spirit of the living God some of you before now you didn't see need to pray until the Holy Ghost began to show you that your next level depends on your priesthood some of you before now you didn't see need to give to kingdom agenda when they say give you say come on get out what do you mean but now your mind is being renewed you now see yourself as a son and it's your responsibility to sponsor God's agenda. It's not because you are coerced. It's actually because your mind is being renewed. And you are taking your place in the kingdom. The people in the world, they think, they brainwash people in church. And I ask them a question. Do you know the quality of people who come to church? We have engineers, professors, doctors. Who are doing very well in their respective spheres. And then you think they brainwash them. You are so wise. You are not brainwashed. Is an eternity we will know who is the fool. You know, the Bible speaks of a, a, a foolish man who gathered his balm and said, Now my soul will rest. And they asked him, What is a soul? Come up. And he left his body. And he discovered that he was rich on earth, but poor in eternity. A wealthy man on earth was begging for a drop of water in eternity. He discovered eternity made his wisdom look foolish. This is why we follow the Holy Ghost here to renew our mind so that we can think like God. Because what God has in mind is for you to get to a level where you begin to operate like Christ. Because in 1 Corinthians 2.16, he said, we have the mind of Christ. Until you read that frequency where you think what God thinks, you have not attained yet. Glory to God. So the Holy Ghost begins to renew your mind. Now, as the Holy Ghost begins to renew your mind, then he will now enter the fourth level where he begins to purge you. He begins to purge you or sanctify you. Malachi 3, verse 2 and 3. He said he will appear as a purger, as a refiner, and he will thoroughly purge the children of Israel so they can bring an acceptable worship to the Lord. He will purge you. Zechariah 13, verse 9. He said he will purge a third part of his people and then he shall be their God and they shall be his people. There are many times when the Holy Ghost will allow you to go through hardship. The furnace of fire. That is where you will now know how to choose God. Even when the going gets tough. Because if, you are, if your mind is renewed and you are not purged. You will think God is here just to pamper you. You will think God is here just for your needs. And you will not grow. You will be a toddler. So a time will come when God will allow you to go through the fire, but you will not be burnt. You will go through the waters, you will not be drowned. That was where Paul went to. In 2 Corinthians 1 verse 8, he said, I will not hide from you our sufferings that we faced when we were in Asia. 
he said we had the verdict of death upon us we despaired of life he said but in it we learned to trust god so later when paul was writing philippians 3 verse 3 he said we had the circumcision that worship god in the spirit rejoicing in christ jesus having no confidence in the flesh the flesh has been cut off you know our christianity now is to keep prophesying to people from january to december that's why we don't have martyrs in our generation that's why we don't have people who can bear the weight of kingdom because they have not been allowed to go through the furnace but if the holy ghost will truly transform you your faith your belief will be tested and it is in the value of sanctification that your loyalty for, to God is tested. Paul said, I have mastered how to abound and to abase. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. When Job was tested, the wife came and said, ah, ah, what are you doing? Curse God and die. He said, why do you speak like one of the foolish women? Are we only going to receive good from God? When evil comes, with, are we supposed to deny God? No way. He stood his ground. Meanwhile, he didn't know that there was a contest in heaven. That the devil was saying, Job is serving you because of what you gave him. But Job proved that he had passed through the furnace. And so even when they lost everything, he stood his ground. The good news is that, number one, it wasn't God that brought evil on Job. He didn't understand correctly. Nonetheless, he didn't change his conviction. And the second good news is that in Job 42 verse 10, the Bible said, God gave Job double for everything that he has lost. There is nothing you lose in trial that is lost. It's actually invested. When you come out of the furnace, it will be doubled. This is the secret of kingdom giants. When you find a man who is a champion, he was tested in the valley. Even Jesus had to be tested. Because there's no man that will pass the test of God that will not be tested. And this is where the Holy Ghost has the opportunity. It's in that trial that the Holy Ghost has the opportunity to sanctify you. When you are going through that trial, he can now come and say, but this malice you keep keeping don't you think it's affecting your prayer now because you are going through affliction there will be no energy you will say yes lord you will leave it in that trial he will come and tell you this alcoholism don't you think you should let go you will say yes you will give so he can't sanctify you until you go through trials so while you are going through trials he will be cutting he will be purging he will be refining by the time he does that then the last thing he will now do is that anything he removes from you he will kill the appetite so that by the time you come out that appetite no longer exists when my mom died 14 years ago i was disheartened what you know before then i thought i was a faith giant because we were healing the sick preaching revival messages i was because i prayed every principle that the bible teaches I made sure I applied all of them meticulously so that I will get the result I was looking for. From seed sowing to prayers to laying of hands to prophesying to inviting those who are anointed so that they are anointed. I did all. She died. When she died, I said, Kai, there's something wrong. This thing we, we are doing is fanatism. I, I said, No. In that moment of despair, the devil came and whispered. I told you before not to suffer yourself. Come around. Let's give you some excitement. And some good friends showed up. Abba, come, let's sit out this evening. Relax, relax. When we sat out, they gave me another type of spirit. One is Holy Ghost. The other one is beer. Alcohol is a spirit. And I went with star. I now wanted to show them I was a man. So the first time, I took like three bottles. I stood up. But I gathered myself and walked carefully and left. For one year, I was a, a, lager, a star. Star became a cooler of the tensions of the soul. <laughs> hey, my God. Star lagabi. When it's cold, there's a way it affects you. <laughs> See? never go out with english language to talk to people who are addicted go with power see those things they they awaken your senses you you go and look at a a drunk or a lord you say repent by talking you are joking you don't know what has bound his soul even the brain has been compared to walk in a certain way neurotransmitters have been activated appetites have been created and in the evenings 
that's the best time. But after one year, we went to a club, and as I was in the club, I heard the wages of sin is death. <laughs> the word came out of the wall. It came out and entered me. I didn't know where fear came from. The appetite died. I walked out of that place. You drink again, the same thing now becomes bitter. Huh? What's going on here? You try it again, it's no longer working. So you are not stopping it by discipline. You are stopping it because the mortifier has done its work. The appetite has died. So you can't taste it anymore. If a man is truly transformed, this is what God does to him. If you do resolution, forget, you will go back. But if the appetite dies, there's nothing to attach itself to anymore. And so that's the last thing the Holy Ghost does when it begins to transform a man. Romans 8, 11. The Bible spoke about the one who mortifies. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, it says he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit. So what he's doing here is that he's reprogramming your body. Go to verse 13. It says if we live in the flesh, if we live after the flesh, we shall die. But if we through the spirit mortify the deeds of the flesh, then we shall live. So the first four things the Holy Ghost does is to awaken your senses to God. Then the last thing he does is to kill your appetites. Mortification is what they do to the dead in the mortuary. The appetite becomes frozen that it can no longer respond. When appetites die, then you know that transformation is complete. This is the second ministry of the Holy Spirit. The third ministry of the Holy Ghost is the helps ministry. Now that you are transformed, the Holy Ghost now begins to help you as touching matters of your destiny. Because as you now go out to navigate destiny, you are going to see many afflictions, many battles, many warfares. Now, those warfares are not necessarily school of process. They are the hindrances that the devil creates around your destiny. And so, the Holy Ghost will need to give you help to arise beyond them. The causes in your bloodline will be dormant until the day you want to fulfill purpose. And that's when they will rise up. You will see sickness that they can't trace the root. You will see stagnation. Even if somebody gives you one million today, after one week, the money will develop wings and disappear. You will be in one spot for 10 years, working harder than everybody you know, but you go nowhere. In fact, the more you struggle, the more you sink. It's like standing in mud. It's better to be still. If you try to struggle, you will sink. This one is not a school of process. They are the wicked traps that the devil creates either using demons or men, wicked men, to make sure that your destiny goes nowhere. It's because of this that the help of the Holy Ghost now comes so that you can fulfill destiny, the presence of the devil, wicked men, or antagonistic systems notwithstanding. Nothing is able to stop you anymore because you would have found help that is yonder. John 14, 16, he said, I will not leave you as orphans. The word is orphanos. He said, but I will send the paraclete, alos, paracletos, another comforter of the same kind. And like I told you, there are seven synonyms of the word comforter. Number one is helper. So any area of your life where your strength is not enough, the Holy Ghost will show up and become your strength. That's why you see that some of the successes you recorded is not because of your ability. You can't explain. There's always a gap that language can cover for. You just know that something happened for this thing to have happened. That's the help ministry of the Holy Spirit. And if God does not help us, we will fail. I've told you before, any man you see standing is standing because he's helped of God. And this is why you must be quick to acknowledge God. The Bible said, in all thy ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. He's not given to man that walketh to order his step. We are full of insufficiencies. This is why the Holy Ghost comes. He said, we don't even know how to pray for as we ought to. Even the prayer that is an anchor. He said there are realms in life where we have deficiency in knowledge to pray. He said, but how be the spirit of him, the help spirit. He said, he helpeth our infirmities with groanings. Because there are times when you can't even pick the frequency. So the Holy Ghost himself begins to pray literally through you. With groanings that cannot be uttered. So that by all means, you don't fail. 
Sometimes I look back, I say, how did we get here? It must have been God. You will come to many junctions where you don't know what to do. But at the end of the day, you will arrive. And then you are wondering, how did I come here? A superior navigator showed up. His name is the Holy Ghost. You need help. There are many times when your next level is being decided in quarters where you don't even have a voice. You don't have a voice. You will not be invited. They just conclude about you. If you even hear that such a meeting happened, maybe it's 20 years later, when your life has been ruined. But in that same meeting, the Holy Ghost will enter somebody's heart. And somebody will rise up to your defense as though you are his first son. And the person may never see you to tell you. It's after five years they will tell you, bro, relax. Oh. That meeting where you were appointed, this is the man that spoke for you. Even if you go to thank the man, your thank don't mean anything to him. Do it out of courtesy, but he doesn't need your thanks because even himself doesn't know why he did it. There was an ancient spirit that whispered into his soul because the heart of kings is in the hands of God. He can tilt it in any direction. <laughs> ah! Ah! for good to them that love God even those who think they want to spoil things for you at the end of the day when they finish that thing will now position you where you should be seen it's if the princes of this world had known they would not have crucified there's a spirit always walking behind the scene for your advantage his name is the Holy Ghost that's why you must have when Paul spoke these are wise men the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that's the ability of God the love of God. That's the consolation of the spirit. And they now added the fellowship. You don't receive the fellowship of the spirit and go. You will stay with it. You will stay with it. He's the Lamb of God who sits upon the throne. He alone. He alone. fathers the fathers of faith i follow the fathers one of the things i do the bible says, be a follower of them who through faith and patience obtain the promise in following the fathers closely studying their materials listening to them and sitting at their feet there are three prayers i learned and they, be, they have become one of the foundations of my success number one is lord help me Lord, help me. I learned that one from Pastor Iya Deboe. Help me, help me, help me, help me. Number two is Lord, have mercy. <laughs> have mercy, have mercy. Because you don't know where you are. Is it not when it's shown to you that you will know? Have mercy, Lord, have mercy. And the third one is, thank you, Father. Thank you. Because you can't outdo God in thanksgiving. The Bible said a thousand falls by your side, ten thousand by your right hand. He shall not come near you. That means the re attacks were not allowed to come near you. Ten thousand, eleven thousand attacks have been stopped from coming near you. 
The one you are receiving and you say you receive, they left that one because your faith can handle it. Any challenge you face is because God knows that one we raise will build your faith. The ones that will destroy you didn't come near you. I'm telling you, if it did, you'd have been destroyed. They said there are arrows that fly by day. There are destruction that waste in noonday. <laughs> you don't know what's happening. But he shields you as the mother hand covers the cheeks. Lift your hands and honor the Lord. <laughs> Meanwhile, hear me. You will not fail. Because it's not by power. It's not by might. It's by the Spirit. He alone is worthy of our praise. Before we continue, Lord, help me. Help me. Men are laden with infirmities. We need help. And even those that God is perfecting, they have too many enemies to fight. Lord, help me. There are some people who are hundred times bigger than you. You have not done anything to them. But they say they won't rest until you are destroyed. They are bigger. You can't fight them. Until God rises for you, you are finished. And then there are some things you are going through. You cost it with your hands. That's why you need to add, have mercy. Because mercy prevails over judgment. Maybe I cost it, I don't know. Have mercy. And then in addition to that, thank you Lord for the ones you have done before. I don't take it for granted. for me to teach about the Holy Ghost. You lose your service. Have you been touched by the message you just heard and you want to give your life to Jesus or you want to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Then say this short prayer. Lord, I admit I am a sinner. I need and want your forgiveness. I accept your death as the penalty for my sin and recognize that your mercy and grace is a gift you offer to me because of your great love, not based on anything I have done. Cleanse me and make me your child. Be faithy receive you into my heart as the Son of God and as Savior and Lord of my life. From now on, help me live for you, with you in control. In your precious name, Amen. Congratulations to you. If you have just said that prayer, you are now a child of God. Look around you for a Bible-believing church and also ask Jesus to direct you to the church where you can continue to serve him. Consider subscribing to this channel too, so that you'll keep learning the realities of God's kingdom. God bless you.